This is inside Tokyo's hidden secret bars and restaurants. Wow, how things have quickly changed. As Japan has finally opened up back to travelers and things are going back to normal, I wanted to make this video for all of you coming here to Japan soon or that may already be here. I'm taking you inside of Tokyo's hidden secret bars and restaurants that many have never ever seen before. This one definitely took some time to put together, so if you like this type of video, let me know in the comments or if you just want to help support the channel, check out the Tokyo merch. And if you have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels, then definitely check out my discord community. Alright let me show you the secret side of Tokyo and let's start here in Ebisu. Number 1 Janai Coffee so this spot right behind me is pretty awesome because it has two layers of secrecy. Let me show you. This hidden secret speakeasy inspired Tokyo bar, Janai Coffee, is located just 5 minutes away from the Ibisu station. For most passerbys and even for some of their unknowing customers, it's just a small ordinary coffee shop serving some everyday delicious joe. Alright, so here's the trick. This place looks like a regular coffee stand and in fact if you say you want to go into the bar, they actually will tell you that it's just a coffee stand. What you need to do is you need to pull out your phone and go to their website. So you have to turn it into a circle like this and it's going to turn into a new screen and you show them this screen to get into the secret bar. <laughs> So for many people, a hidden speakeasy bar could be rather intimidating, especially for first-timers. But once you step inside this spot, it's quite a welcoming atmosphere, almost like a stylish modern hotel lobby. Granted, hotel lobbies don't intimidate you. Okay, so we made it in. Look at this place. It's not a coffee stand, like I said, but it's actually a real deal bar. Let's see what kind of drinks they have. One of the characteristics of this bar is its unique menu. First of all, they've got a variety of original coffee cocktails like coffee, lemon sour, and Janai cappuccino. In addition, they've got a course menu for the people who don't know what to order. Apparently, the owners wanted this speakeasy to be a cool spot for anyone to hang out. Okay, so here we go. This is one of their signature drinks, the Janai Espresso. Wow, that's such a strong espresso and lemon smell. It smells so good. Wow, that is amazing. Coffee and the alcohol is a really good balance. I feel like both of them are quite strong here. So pretty much it'll wake you up and get you happy at the same time. In fact, the bar has all kinds of original coffee cocktails which definitely suits the theme. Influenced greatly by one of the owners who's an experienced barista. So the coffee here will even give your local coffee shop a run for its money. So they have a lot of coffee cocktails as well as regular cocktails if you're into that. So whichever way you want to go, this place is a spot. Okay, so we're actually not done yet. Let me show you the final step of this process. There you go, the final step. When you leave this place, they actually ask you if you want some tea or coffee to take back with you. So when people see you walking out, you actually have some coffee or tea in hand. Awesome. Number two, do you know scared? So at this spot, I'm taking you to the old town road, but we gotta go quick before we get stuck out in the cold. Let's go. Just a minute from Shinjuku Sanchome Station, you can find this secret horse meat izakaya, Japanese drinking restaurant, Ryunosuke, in the heart of one of the busier Shinjuku drinking spots near the Isetan shopping center. It's pretty hard to find and also often fully booked, so I recommend making reservations in advance and checking the address listed in the description. Okay, so we just arrived here on the second floor, and if you look 
This place looks exactly like a meat locker. You have the proper hinges right here. You have the double locking mechanism, but I promise you it is a real deal restaurant establishment. Let me take you inside and show you what they have. All right, let's go. You may get a bit suspicious going through this narrow entrance, but rest assured you're in the right spot. Oh, that's the owner, Yunosuke-san. Wow, look at this amazing place. He designed the interior to give it a nostalgic atmosphere at the time when Tokyo Tower was first opened in the 1920s. Just looking around, you see all of this historical memorabilia. You can see all the posters, even the sake looks kind of historical. These panels appear rather old and worn, but in fact were recreated in this vintage-like style of famous Japanese companies, just like back in the day. Enough about this whole atmosphere. Let's see if we can get a drink and maybe get some food at this place as well. So look at this, I got Nihonshu right here and right when he poured it in, it started to freeze. You can see just right above, it's just it's frozen. It's pretty amazing. Let's take a sip. Ah, that is good old Nihonshu for you. Like on a hot summer day, this is perfect. Ice cold, just like this place. Well, this place isn't ice cold. This drink is ice cold. This place is perfect temperature. <laughs> it starts to melt a little bit, but this is the frozen part. <laughs> little did you guys know, this place specializes in raw horse meat, part of Japanese food culture. You cannot like it, you can like it, but it's just part of just regular Japanese cuisine. Okay, let's just dip this in the sauce. Mmm, that is good. Really fresh, nice and tender. The soy sauce, the garlic, the ginger, all that combined with the meat is just so flavorful. So this is the tategami, and it's a little bit fatter than the other two. Those other ones are red meat, but it is equally, if not more delicious if you like fatty food. What's really interesting about this soy sauce is rather sweet, kind of like Kyushu soy sauce, but the soy sauce is made specifically for horse meat. But you know what? This is not over. Let me show you something else that's pretty interesting at this place. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you. You know I like to take you around to all the different toilets here in Japan, and this one was quite interesting, at least for me. This toilet has a tank at the top, and if you want to flush it, all you have to do is pull the handle right here, and it'll flush. So although this is a basashi horse meat izakaya, the shop also provides other foods to go along with their drinking style. But if you are here, rest assured that they've got high quality horse meat airship directly from Kumamoto, which is known for its fresh horse meat. Number 3. No room for squares. So this spot right here is a vintage jazz bar, but when you make it to the entrance, you may think that you might need to pay a quarter or two to get in. Let me show you what I mean. No Room for Squares is a fairly new jazz bar secretly hidden in the back streets of Shimo Kitazawa. But as long as you can find this spot, you're welcome to come inside. Okay, so here we are. Look behind me. We have an old school Coca-Cola vending machine. You can see that it literally looks like it's just a vending machine in the wall. But watch this. Alright, let's go. This is another speakeasy inspired Tokyo bar, but this one has a relaxed classic American vintage bar vibe. Oh, there's the owner, Nakata-san! Okay, so we've made it in the bar. This place looks phenomenal. Just looking around, I feel like I'm in the 1920s. And what's interesting is they don't have a menu here, and all you need to do is tell them what kind of mood you're in. You can even tell them about your life if you wanted to, and they'll make a drink based on what you tell them. 
So I told him that I wanted some of their special gojus, and he didn't disappoint by producing a prohibition cocktail called The Last Word. And as he crafted the drink, he told me the story behind it, a lost recipe from the 1920s which was recently rediscovered. Okay, look, we just got our drink. Oh wow, it already smells strong. Let's take a drink. Whoa, that'll get you up in the morning. That is a kick right there. It has kind of like an absinthe taste to it. If you guys can see that absinthe taste is this guy right here mixed in with a boodles gin so if you guys want to try this drink for yourself then you can come here and just tell them that paolo sent you here but if you want to try a different drink then they have all different types so just tell them how you feel and he'll make something that's just for you no menu sounds a bit intimidating but the owner is extremely friendly and also speaks a little bit of english oh and if you think you're going to be a bit hungry they also serve italian food if you reserve in advance for jazz lovers, the bar has live jazz performances on the weekends. In fact, the owner himself is a well-known saxophone player in Japan. On any given night, you might see him on stage. Well, if he's not busy making drinks. The bar space itself is fairly tight, so the live music should prove to be a powerful experience. Number 4. Moss so this next secret hidden spot is for all of my meat lover fans out there that also want to have a drink. Let me show you. Just 5 minutes from Sengenjaya Station, you can find this casual dining bar hidden behind this very Japanese style vending machine. Okay, so when walking up to this spot, it looks like just a regular cigarette vending machine. It has natural American cigarette boxes. I don't know about you guys, but I think I'd be fooled. Would you guys get fooled if you just saw this door? Let me know in the comments. Let me show you how to get in. All you have to do is turn this key right here. Okay, let's go inside. All right, we've made it through the tobacco gates. Uh, okay, so we've arrived and just look at how cozy this place looks. It's just so antique. Look at all of the different colors. Very, very unique to Tokyo. You don't see something like this very often. It's like a mix of different cultures all in one that you get to enjoy when coming here. Okay, so let's get the food now. Today, I'm ordering two different Wagyu beef delights. And oh yeah. Alright, so while we're waiting around for our food, let me try to explore this place just a little bit and show you guys around. Let's go. So they have this kind of outside area. It has kind of like that outdoor balcony kind of feel. It has a bunch of couches so you can get together with your friends. Kind of reminds me of, you know, when you were in college, just like hanging out. I'm kind of interested in seeing the bathroom here as well. Oh, wow. Look at this, it's like a disco in here. This would be an intense bathroom experience, especially since it's like open until three in the morning. You could be um, enjoying the lights while enjoying the bathroom at the same time. Okay, so look, all of this food has arrived. And I forgot to mention, if you come to this place, they have otoshi here. You can either choose pistachio or you can get a tequila shot. And guess what I decided? I got a tequila shot. That's perfect. First of all, we have the rare beef with the sea urchin on top. This one has like a big piece of sea urchin. Just a little bit of a dip right there. Okay, let's try it. That is phenomenal. It tastes so fresh. The first thing you taste is that sea urchin and then it's followed up by the really nice, tender, silky, smooth meat. That is amazing. I'm glad I ordered four. I also ordered the Nikuyama, a mountain of thickly sliced Wagyu beef. Let's get a large piece right here. Mm, that Wagyu is cooked 
perfectly. I love they have the crispy garlic on the top, some peppers, and then you actually have two different types. You can use this soy sauce, you can use the mustard. <gasps> What's even pretty awesome about this place is that you can order 10 shots here for 2,000 yen. That's like less than 20 bucks. This place is amazing, so definitely check out this spot. And number five, Igu and Peace. At this next secret spot hidden away in Shibuya, this is where adults go to play around. Let me show you how. Igu and Peace is just a few minutes walk from the Shibuya station right next to Mark City. It's a playful and unique Tokyo dining bar perfect for bringing a date or getting together with friends. It's a bit of a puzzle to get inside, so let me show you how it works. So this place is one of those kind of like mystery rooms that you have to solve just to get in. If you look around, there's just a Mona Lisa, there's all sorts of books. So if we looked around, here's what we need to do. First, you gotta find this book right here. Looks a little bit, you know, kind of out of place because it's set down. Well, it's out of place for a reason. Oh look, there's an iguana right here. And what do you see when you see an iguana? You push it! This lit up red. Let's go. Inside, it has an open atmosphere with an adult playground kind of vibe in a classy but down to earth kind of way. You know, kind of my style. Okay, so we just sat down, we got our menu. This place looks amazing. There's just so much stuff to do. Now, the thing about this place is one, the menu itself looks pretty cool. It's like actually a magazine. So I ordered their popular liquid nitrogen mojito, which is just one of many of their rather satisfying and quirky drink selections. Along with their drinks, they've also got some tasty food hitters that won't disappoint. Okay, so here we go. We got our nitrogen mojito. This is actually my first time. Look at that. It just looks amazing. It smells so fresh too. Let's take our first drink. That is fantastic. I've had a few mojitos in my day and this one is pretty good and it's super cold. They have some sugar at the bottom. So if you want it really sweet and you can just mix, mix, mix. There you go, sweet, refreshing, perfect drink. This place is all about having fun. They actually have a drinking game here where you can actually win free drinks. Check this out. Basically, you got the roulette table here and you can place different bets and get different drinks for free. You know, like my man Wesley Snipe says, always bet on black. Kuro onegashimasu. Kuro de. Oh, kuro so this here is the free drink that you get when you win the roulette game. But when you order the real drink, this is what you get. This is some high ball love right here. Anyways, while they're making the food, let me show you around this place just a little bit to show you what else you can do here. And they have a mini cooper that you can even eat inside of. This is a three-seater, apparently you can sit right there and then two people can go here and there's a table so you can enjoy drinks you can eat in a freaking Mini Cooper, it's awesome. And then apparently back here, there's even a VIP section. So this is their VIP room. You can see that it is quite spacious. So if you do have a big party, maybe this is the place to go. And look at behind me, they even have a proper old school bath here. You can probably even just like go in here if you wanted. And here's my food. Of course I got their spicy yang yum fried chicken. With that, I'll keep going until you say stop. Grated cheese topping. Big piece of fried chicken for you. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Yeah, cheese complements the fried chicken so well. It does have like a really strong kick. Oh, that's really good. I also ordered their smoky smoke steak. Cause you know, food appearing from a cloud of smoke always tastes better. Well, unless it's cigarette smoke, that's disgusting. So there you go. Those are my hidden secret spots here in Tokyo. If you guys like this video, definitely help me out and hit that like button. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, let me know in the comments because I might have a few more Tokyo spots hidden up my sleeve. Or if you guys wanna see more videos about Japan, hit that subscribe button and the button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.